the Alta Rebbe continues to explain what does it mean from Genesis, the word of God. How do we understand that's the way it's in the written Torah, in the book of Genesis, in the story of creation. There we understand it is the word of God that is animating something from nothing. So let us take this deeper. The Alter Rebbe takes us deeper to understand based on the hidden wisdom, Kabbalah, how this is understood in the oral tradition, in rabbinic literature, giving, you know, giving us a deeper understanding of creation. So the word of God in the Talmud, sages refer to it, the word called Shechina. Shechina means divine presence. That's the word of God. It's also referred to as Ima Tata, which means Ima Mother, the lower, the nether mother, the lower mother. There's a higher mother. <laughs> Whole hierarchy. Right? Or Matronisa in the terminology of the Zohar, which means queen. Which means queen. So, um, you know, the queen, um, this is all relating to the lives of uh, the children and the subjects. So, the children is the mother, the queen is the subjects, relating to the creation as queen and mother, and as Shechina. So Shechina comes from word Shochein, which means to dwell. Meaning, um, the indwelling of the power of God within creation. Now there's another ta a terminology, and that's what the Kabbalists use. And that's called Malchus. Malchus, we translate as sovereignty, royalty, kingship, connected to Machinisa, which is the queen, right? So the basic reason why is because Malchus actually relates to the way it's written in scripture. What is in scripture in Genesis? The word of God. Well, a king rules with his word, right? His word is law. That's how he rules. Um, the Alta Rebbe says there's other reasons why also in the, in the basic there is that um, the king is head and shoulders above the people, real a real true king, right? And yet they're to serve the people. So Malchus is the power of God to create something from nothing, which means head and shoulders beyond everything in the creative force. But at the same time, it is there only for the sake of creation. Of creations just as the king head and shoulders above the people and yet there to serve the people the true idea of a king <laughs> not, not, not uh, the opposite right so this this sphere of this divine attributes of Malchus it is found in the world of Atsilus and it's responsible for the world of Vatsilas, which is the world of emanation. We have emanator, God, the emanator, and then the emanation of God. Um, and Malchus is found there. Also, Malchus is found in the world of Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya, which are creative worlds, not emanations of God. So you have God, emanation of God, and creation. Malchus is found in the emanation of God. It's found in the creative worlds, meaning the word of God that animates. So Malchus in Atzilus animates. What? Brings into creation what? Lofty souls, because that's a lofty world. Souls of the righteous. Like Adam. The patriarchs, the prophets. These are souls that are like 
that have no will of their own, they're abnegated totally to their source. Like the rider completely controls the horse, the chariot, right? Completely. This is like the Shechina, the word of God that is speaking through Moses, because Moses is nothing but an expression in his words of God. Why? Because Malchus in the world of Vatsilus brings into being lofty souls like Adam, like Moses, and the like. Now, Malchus, again, royalty, the word of God, right? In the world of Bria, also animates, also brings into creation souls but not as lofty, angels in that world, and the like. And in every world, it does so. Malchus in the world of Asiya um, brings into animation. In the spiritual world of Asiya, brings into animation um, The, the spiritual realm there that is then Malchus brings into creation in this world even the element of earth which is inanimate it's inanimate and the water below the earth referring to specifically here the the word of God that is animating and bringing the holiness of God, the royalty of God, animating in each level, as we said, a come down, but nonetheless, the the uh, uh, holiness. And in this and then in this physical world, it's animating the the actual physical holy land of Israel. That's why when Jews come to Israel, you know, when they get off the plane, they what? Many do the first thing. They kiss the earth. They kiss the earth. Because it's holy. It's holy land. Why? Because it's coming from Malchus of God. It's animating Asiya. The physical reality of this world. Specifically the holy land. So holy land wasn't because, you know, Abraham chose it. Or God just, you know, conveniently thought it was a great... No, no. Because it's animated from Malchus. Bringing into this physical world um, how about the rest of the world where does that get from stay tuned tomorrow's class where does unholiness get its vitality from stay tuned tomorrow's class a brief question I have Uh, Davida, is, is Malchus masculine or, or, or and Shechina feminine? No, Malchus and Shechina are feminine qualities of the divine. Good question. Even though we call it king, so king sounds like very masculine. <laughs> it sounds like. But it's a feminine quality. Interesting enough. So, yeah, we have to be careful not to get caught up in, uh, in Western ideas and, um, and in, in words that, you know, we need the content. The quality of Malchus is very much a feminine quality, um, which we can talk about. Um, another time. Any other questions? Rabbi, I have a question. Go ahead, Vilma. I read somewhere in Bereshit about what you said about Israel, the Holy Land, that it was somehow that quality, I'm not sure if it's related to what you said, but the holiness of it or whatever was imbued 
by the Jewish, by the actions of the Jewish people actually conquering the land? Um, very good question. That's how it, 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 it I don't know, but, uh, that's how it, so to speak, um, actualized or came into effect. But the, the, the reality of the holiness of the Holy Land has nothing to do with um, our actions. We only actualize it. We only reveal it through that conquering. That's true. But the reality of it is it's being animated from Malchus of Asiya directly from the divine attribute, God's godliness, right? God's godliness that is animating it directly, that makes it the Holy Land. Now, because of the concept of partnership, which we'll get more into, um, so then there is this an idea of, um, there is an idea of, uh, uh, of us actualizing it, right? But the, we don't create the holiness of it, just like I don't create my own power, so I can't create the holiness, but I can um, actualize it. That's the idea. But very good, excellent uh, question. Excellent question. Okay. All right, folks. Powerful idea. We're going to learn more about this. Um, David is asking, what does it mean that inanimate objects are referred to in human emotions and actions such as rejoice and sing? Because they, again, exactly the idea that it has a soul to it. So an inanimate object seems to be inanimate, but the truth is, if you know you put it under a microscope and you see the movement of the uh, the electrons and neutrons and, and so on, you see that it's uh, it's got it's alive. <laughs> it's alive, right? It's alive. Rabbi, can yes. I ask one more question? Go ahead. So, like what you said about the Holy Land being infused with holiness from a spiritual realm of Atsia, does that mean that was designed that way from the beginning? Totally. Totally, totally. Yep. Totally designed that way. Again, more on that we'll discuss, God willing. Thank you. It's just so deep, these concepts. Yes, powerful, powerful. All right, folks. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kedeshim, Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful